Welcome back to the Blockbuster Show. I'm Adam Sykes, and uh, well, this was going to be the commentary video, but I recorded some commentary, and honestly, it would be more interesting to watch it with a group of people, because these were actually the first times I've watched these movies in full, so I, I just decided I'd keep it brief and just condense this. You're just going to get an audio review for both of these movies back-to-back -back in one, so we're doing another double feature episode for December. Great. The two movies are both horribly animated Christmas specials. One's horrible 2D animation, and the other is horrible CG animation. The first movie we're going to be doing is The Christmas Tree. So the Christmas tree looks like it's trying to be like a Disney type of thing. Uh, the animation style reminded me a lot of kind of wannabe Disney stuff from around that time. Like watch any shitty straight to video Disney knockoff. It looks a lot like one of those. The main plot is about this orphanage run by this evil bitch who's a lot like Cruella DeVille. She's just stereotypically evil. She hates children. She hates little animals. And she hates the fact that the kids seem to have a fondness for a, a, tr a Christmas tree growing in the backyard who they gave a nickname Mrs. Hopewell. This evil old lady tricks the town mayor into giving them money by making it seem like she cares about the kids because every time he comes over to visit, she presents the kids as like they have perfect clothing and all that kind of stuff and they're well taken care of and he just gives her two bags of money and that's it and uh with recycled animation which we're going to see a lot in this special because the animation this sucks monkey nuts a small family comes to town with uh, a husband slash father wife slash mother and their two kids uh, a boy and a girl and the wife slash mother she's going to be working at the orphanage and of course she sees what an evil old bitch this lady running the place is and uh her two kids grow a friendship with all the very creepy children and these kids too as well as the dog that they keep a secret around the evil old lady named licorice uh, they grow a fondness for Mrs. Hopewell as well. And eventually the kids find out that the evil old broad is going to have the Christmas tree chopped down. So uh, the two main kids have to go to the North Pole and look for Santa. And uh, this results in them getting attacked by a, a knockoff Baloo from the Jungle Book. It seems that the little girl dies. But then, oh, what a surprise, she's actually okay, and uh, Santa also exists in this movie. Yeah, Santa just shows up in the third act. The evil lady is about to cut the tree down, and the kids protest. The mayor sees that she's really evil. Everybody around them sees her true colors at this point, and she's about to cut the tree down. And then lightning strikes the tree, and at first I thought she was dead. But no, apparently her brains got scrambled, and now she's all of a sudden a good guy. This feels like a Christmas movie that was made by someone who had no idea how to make a kid's movie and they just somehow ended up shitting this out for the Christmas season. Unlike uh, Christmas Vacation 2 and Jingle All the Way 2, it doesn't feel like it was cynically put together. It feels like a really bizarre labor of love that's just so laughably bad. The animation is terrible. The voice acting is so stiff and monotone and robotic. And it's really weird because the two main kids are clearly voiced by actual kids. It's like if you asked a three-year-old to read lines. But there's one kid who's obviously just an adult and they didn't even try to like alter her voice whatsoever to make her sound like a kid. So that was really distracting. Most of this is narrated to the point where it makes me think, why wasn't this just some shitty audio tape of a shitty kid's book? Why did this need to be an animated feature if a majority of this was going to be narrated? A lot of the time they will say something in the narration and then they'll have a character say exactly what the narrator said or they'll show it immediately after he says it. And I know a lot of people would say it's the room of Christmas movies, but actually going off of a movie we did for Blockbuster Show, I'd say this is like the go animate the movie of Christmas movies. It's the awful animation, the awful storytelling, uh, the horrible pacing. This is right up there with Go Animate as one of the funniest So Bad It's Good movies for Blockbuster Show. As a movie itself, it sucks so bad, but... If you look at it from the So Bad It's Good perspective, you get a bunch of friends, and you have a bad movie night, and you guys like to pick apart shit like this, I say go for it. This is right up there. And next up, we have Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, so whereas that was bad 2D animation, this is bad 3D animation, and somehow or other it looks worse than Christmas Brigade and Christmas Light. Because I had no idea that this was a thing. And people kept telling me, oh yeah, Rhapsody Street Kids is this terrible animated Christmas special that was on TV once and then it disappeared and it became like a rare sought after thing. And then ultimately it was discovered by the internet and all this kind of stuff. So at first I'm like, okay, it's probably gonna be like bad in the same way that a cringy Roblox or Minecraft fan animation is gonna be bad. But no, looking at the animation, it looks more like one of those YouTube channels that make intentionally bad animation to be funny, like, it looks like surreal entertainment like level of animation except that's intentionally bad the plot is very basic very standard uh this little kid ricky has a crush on this girl in his class who is just like stereotypical rich pompous snobby girl and she's terrible she's like like take the worst traits of any generic stuck up prissy bitchy girl from a cartoon you grew up with and ramp it up to the nth degree and she's just insufferable so ricky gives this girl a teddy bear that was like a huge part of his family and uh, she rejects it and says that it's stupid and then later he writes a letter to santa two days before christmas you figure that one out and uh he says you know he hopes that he gets a video box Whatever the hell that means. I don't know if they mean a DVD player or a v VHS player or what or if that's their way of getting around not saying a copyrighted video game console. I don't know. And he also says that he hopes everybody in his class gets Christmas presents. The girl reads the letter. She's touched by this, so she tries to get the bear back and they end up getting the bear back, but for some reason, yeah, there's 12 more minutes of the movie after that, and you see her family, and... Oh, there's also songs all throughout this movie, and the songs are, like, not horribly produced, but they're not anything special either. One of the big problems with this movie is that all the characters are incredibly one-dimensional, like... The main kid, uh, he raps, because I feel like this was trying to be urban and cool. And then his best friend is this fat kid who has a scarf over his mouth the entire time. I don't know why. Uh, my guess was to cover up, like, they just didn't want to animate more mouth animation. Uh, and he's always carrying around a sandwich because he's the fat kid. It's seriously, like, on that level. Generic bully characters who are just there to be bullies and spout lame-ass insults to the main characters. The prissy, snobby girl eventually, like I said, gets her redemption arc. She has kind of a geeky best friend who still believes in Santa and when she's being really bitchy in the beginning of the movie she laughs at her like haha you believe in Santa you're a dumbass and then eventually she goes yes I believe in Santa because just like in the Christmas tree Santa shows up at the very end that was the the common theme with these movies Santa shows up at the very end of the film and it's very weird during the end of the movie when they show uh, ending credits in comic sans of course in the grand uh, cool cat saves the kids tradition uh, they have like 2D drawings, apparently like that was like concept art, and it looks better than the actual movie itself. So it makes me wonder, was this not finished? They just rushed it out and they're like, ah, screw it, just release it as a movie? Or was that seriously the best they could do? Uh, it's It makes me, it's like a chicken or the egg situation. And the really jarring thing about all this is halfway through the movie, I was like, wait a minute, I'm recognizing these voice actors. And then I look it up. There's a lot of big name fucking people in this movie. You have the voices of uh, Best Disney Princess Belle. You have the voice of Ariel from Little Mermaid in here. You have uh, the, the Black Power Ranger, Zack, from the original 90s Power Rangers. Shit, you have Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson. The, the biggest shocker to me was Mark Hamill is in this. I have not been this baffled watching a movie since plumbers don't wear ties, but unlike that, I wasn't pissed off or frustrated because it's bad, don't get me wrong, it's shit. But when I was watching this movie, I couldn't help but just be astounded at what I was looking at because it's so bad. It's like, this is real versus plumbers don't wear ties. I was saying they're going, this is real. I cannot believe someone actually sat there and sold this shit as a video game. If I had to recommend any of these movies to make fun of, uh, Christmas Tree seems like the obvious choice, but honestly, if you like So Bad It's Good movies, I kind of recommend both. I mean, you just, this is one of those movies where if you like dissecting bad shit like this, then yes, definitely feel free to look these up on YouTube and just have a ball with them because they're both bad. Me personally, I got more laughs out of Christmas Tree, but Rhapsody Street Kids comes pretty close. There's some terrible shit in this movie. We only have one more video for Blockbuster Show this month, and like I mentioned last time, it's marketed as a knockoff of Disney and Pixar's Brave, but apparently it's a Christmas movie, so I figured it would be appropriate. So we'll see how that movie turns out. I don't know if it's going to be in the same league as these two movies, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, until then, I'm Adam Sykes of the Blockbuster Show, and we will see you guys in the next video.